Hi there, Smart Drivers talking to you tonight about long trips, holiday trips. American Thanksgiving is coming up next weekend. A lot of you are going to be going to Grandma's house for turkey and cranberry sauce, which are required ingredients for Thanksgiving in the United States. Joe is here tuning in from Toronto, snow all across southern Ontario, so it's matching our weather out here. My folks are visiting from Ontario and uh, left the nice weather to come out here to winter. Uh, Colton is here tuning in from Greenbrier, Arkansas. Welcome, my friend. Mallory is here from the Maritimes. If you're just tuning in, let us know where you're tuning in from and what class of license you're going for. Uh, Corey is here as well. Uh, Bricks for Wheels. Corey is the moderator, does an excellent job of getting up the videos that I suggest you have a look at for further details on the answers I give you to your questions about passing a driver's test becoming a safer, smarter driver, or starting a career as a truck or bus driver, all of that there. And if you are working towards a driver's license, check out Pass Your Driver's Test uh, first time course package over at the Smart Drive Test website. As a bonus, we include both the winter and defensive driving smart courses. Uh, you can pick that course package up for about $38 US, so check that out over there. Jasmine, my friend, how are you? And Sean is tuning in from Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. Minnesota is definitely, I suspect, getting star. Uh, and uh, Joe is saying that they have weather from winter weather from Windsor to Kingston, Ontario, which means that it's all across southwestern Ontario. My friend Elevator Fan is here from Monticello, Indiana, the U.S. Midwest. Uh, Warren is here. Hello, my friend. Hello, hello, hello. So we're talking about... Long trips and holiday driving, so you want to be using cruise control. Uh, most of the newer vehicles that you're going to be driving are going to have adaptive cruise control, so you're not going to have to adjust the speed set of the cruise control as well. You're going to have lane assist, and it's as close as you're going to get to self-driving vehicles in this day and age. And if you're interested in the course package, the Smarter Driver course package guaranteed to pass your driver's test first time, Corey's put that link up for you in the comments there. Uh, Jasmine, uh, well, rainy, cold day in Philadelphia there. And uh, yes, Aaron is tuning in from Chilliwack, BC. And Philadelphia is in southeastern Pennsylvania, for those of you who don't know or haven't seen the movie Rocky. So that is there as well. Uh, so holiday driving, use cruise control, uh, do a pre-trip inspection on your vehicle, make sure the tires are good, windshield wipers, washer fluid checked up, check all the washer or the fluids on your vehicle before heading out. Trip planning, if you don't know where you're going, haven't been there before, make sure that you do that as well so that uh, you don't break down on the side of the road because the other thing you want to do is if you are not good at changing a tire, uh, other small things, maintenance checks on your vehicle and whatnot, you definitely need to get it into an automotive technician. We don't call them mechanics anymore. They're called automotive technicians. So have a look at all of that. Uh, elevator says he's not feeling well right now. I'm trying to get over a cough after getting over a fever today. Uh, sorry to hear that you're not feeling well, my friend. I know how that feels a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I wasn't feeling too well myself and uh, was just actually crunching the sign video or yeah, the road science video that I live streamed did a couple of weeks ago and I realized that I had a cold that day and was struggling to talk so I can definitely I definitely feel for you my friend uh, elevator uh, sorry Mallory it has turned cold here in the Maritimes I think it's winter just about everywhere and it's definitely winter early here uh, where I live here in the Okanagan Valley uh, in the interior of British Columbia so it's definitely cold here too and Corey's put up the video on how to use vehicles cruise control and have a look at that to avoid distracted driving. Uh, the other thing that's happening next week after American Thanksgiving, of course, is Black Friday. And if you're going out for Black Friday looking for sales, it's going to be crazy in parking lots and those types of things. So allow yourself extra time. Maybe you want to park near the back of the parking lot, maybe even some other parking lot because you may not get into the parking lots. So all of that is happening. It's the biggest shopping day in the United States before Christmas, and that's now spreading out to other places like Canada and whatnot. And then of course there's uh, cyber sales on Monday as well. So lots of shopping going on, uh, American Thanksgiving, a huge holiday there in the United States as well. Uh, elevator says it was raining and snowing in Indiana today. So yes, yuck, lots of yucky, mucky weather. And if you're 
heading out for Turkey Day, be sure that you definitely do a pre-trip inspection. Check out all the things that you need to check on your vehicle so you don't end up on the side of the road. And the other piece that I was going to say to that, if you are not able to change a tire or not comfortable doing that, then definitely get yourself a AAA membership or a CAA membership, Canadian Automobile Association. They're inexpensive. They're less than $100 and you can get towed. They'll send uh, people out to change tires and give you a boost and those types of things. So do that as well. One of the things that I would suggest that you learn how to do is to jump a battery, boost a battery from another vehicle because it's easy to do. Uh, and uh, you know you can have a set of jumper cables in your car and if you run the battery dead for whatever reason uh, it's very easy to flag somebody else down have them come over and to give you a boost and I just did that a couple of weeks ago in a parking lot uh, unfortunately a couple of women an old car that they'd started up after a few years and the battery was dead in it and uh, just you know I saw them with the jumper cables and I just went over and gave them a boost on the car it's very quick it takes about 10 minutes and uh, easy to do and help somebody out during the day and you know random acts of kindness that's what we're all about here and Corey's put up the video on how to boost a dead battery so that'll help you out as well so what we'll do here is we'll get over to the presentation presentation is about 10 or 12 minutes and then we'll come back and answer any questions you have about passing a driver's test being a safer smarter driver definitely winter driving with all of that going on and becoming a bus or truck driver so road trips and holiday driving for those of you new to smart drive test my name is Rick August I was a truck driver in the 1990s hauling freight between Ontario, Canada and the eastern seaboard, east of the Mississippi and the United States there and did make it out to the Midwest. 2006, I graduated from the University of Melbourne in Australia with my doctorate in legal history and essentially I looked at how the law and policing impacted traffic and, and moved to influence driver behavior and realized that uh, didn't really do that a whole lot but it did give police many more powers in terms of controlling traffic in the cities as road speeds as road speeds were increasing at a crazy rate uh, while i was going to university in australia i drove buses for greyhound there in one of the regional bus lines and in 2015 i started the online youtube channel which has been wildly more successful than i could have imagined we just passed 250,000 subscribers uh, website uh, ebooks lots of stuff going on here on the YouTube channel so it's been really really successful and if you want to know more about me about the smart drive test online channel uh, Corey's put up the link for the autobiography there in the description so have a look at that uh, good stuff to look at uh, if you are experiencing sub zero temperatures where you live uh, you know minus 20 degrees Celsius minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit uh, definitely check out the Sub-Zero engine starts, how to get your vehicle started in cold weather, especially if you have a push button, it'll show you how to do that. Uh, car care and maintenance uh, podcast, have a look at that if you are interested in maintaining your vehicle more, knowing when to change the oil, change other fluids in the vehicle, air filters, when to change transmission fluid, all of those, all of that information that will keep your vehicle running in tip-top condition. So the first thing you want to do heading out on a holiday long trip for Thanksgiving, do a car care, go over all the fluids, check the tire pressure, check your wiper blades, check to make sure that there aren't any cracks or chips in your windshield, check the engine oil, if the engine oil needs to be changed, you've been negligent on that, then take it into the shop and get the oil changed, or if maybe you do that yourself, you can change your oil. Uh, take it into a automotive technician, I have mechanic written there, which my brother would scold me for, automotive technician so uh, take it into them and have them do the service on your vehicle so that you can keep it running and you're not going to end up on the side of the road and broken down navigation if you don't know where you're going if you're going to a new place or grandma's moved and you need to get to her place for the turkey then have a look on google maps uh, check out the mile markers for the exit numbers the exit numbers and the mile markers are one and the same in every state except New York. So if you're in other other places, then check that out. All right, plan breaks. Uh, children, if you're traveling with children, know where you can stop, get into playgrounds, get them out of the vehicle, and those types of things you want to stop every couple of hours. So know that you're going to travel about 100, 120 miles, and then you're going to have a break. Uh, if you get lost... You get off the wrong path and the nav is not redirecting you back around. 
uh, then stop and ask for directions. Uh, look where you're going and those types of things. Do not be driving and try and figure out where you're going. Try and reset the nav and those types of things. Uh, definitely stop and get that figured out. And as Elevator just saying, said, just check your fuel as well. And if you're driving in winter conditions or in climate weather, make sure that you don't let the vehicle go below a quarter of a tank. I would recommend half a tank and then start filling the vehicle up, uh, especially if you're in places where you don't know where you are and I know that you can you know fuel stations nearby and those types of things technology has really taken a lot of the guesswork out of a lot of this but it's just easier on your vehicle to make sure that you don't know, looking for fuel when you're at half a tank uh, have activities in the vehicle for children young children and I know that a lot of parents now stick them with a movie or something in the vehicle uh, and that's pretty easy uh, one of the things that I used to do with my kids was had audiobooks in the vehicle uh, I didn't let them watch movies and whatnot Essentially, what you can do is you can go to the library, you can get an audiobook. Uh, your kids can have the book open, and the audiobook will read the book so they can flip the pages while they're going through the book and those types of things. Uh, you can have games in the vehicle. There's uh, lots of websites. If you, you uh, Google car games and whatnot, then you can have that in the vehicle and have accessibility to items. And one of the things I recommend if you do are traveling with your kids, uh, make sure that you have a garbage accessible in the back because when my children were younger and traveling with them, you would get out at the other end and the, 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 the uh, footwells in the back of the vehicle would be absolutely full with rubbish and whatnot that they had put down there and whatnot. So have a rubbish, uh, have a trash that and they can throw all that stuff in and whatnot. Uh, food, drinks, and pets in the vehicle. Uh, it, obviously, with pets, it makes it a lot easier. If you you have smaller pets and they're crate trained and whatnot, then you can put them in a crate. Uh, food and drink accessible, as we said, especially if you're traveling with kids and whatnot. Uh, if you have your spouse or your partner in the passenger seat, they can be responsible for dishing out the food and handing out the drinks and those types of things. Uh, assign roles. Uh, children look for landmarks, look for mile markers. Uh, blankets and pillows in the vehicle if people are going to sleep and be sleepy and those types of things. And as well, if you're taking or are on prescription medication, know the effects that those are going to have on you when you're driving. Cruise control, as I said in the introduction, be sure that you know how to use your cruise control because if you're out on the highway, it's really going to eliminate fatigue and distractions. Uh, most of the newer vehicles are going to have adaptive cruise control. I would recommend that you set it on minimum four seconds, not, you know, six seconds is a bit much, but four seconds will work for you in terms of adaptive cruise control. And if you have lane assist, you can use that as well, and that will really help you out in terms of uh, reducing fatigue and distracted driving. The other thing that being on cruise control is going to reduce the chances of you getting a speeding ticket because we're all tempted to speed a little bit when we get out on highways. So use cruise control. Night driving, if you are driving at night, you're driving overnight to get to grandma's house for the turkey the next day. Uh, if you get sleepy, sleepy drivers rest in pieces. I can't say it any more clear than that. The only thing that is going to fix fatigue when you're driving is pulling over into a rest area, pulling over into a pickle park someplace and get some rest. That's the only thing that you can do for night driving. The other thing is uh, there's a night driving video here uh, live stream I did a couple of weeks ago, turn your dash lights down as low as you can stand them, use uh, cruise control, that way you're not going to have to monitor your speed at night, and take regular breaks so that you can keep yourself awake. The other thing that will help you to stay awake is if you're eating rice cakes and carrots, I, it's what I used to do when I used to drive truck back in the, back in the day, and that would help me to stay awake at night. Okay, every couple of hours take a break. As I said, 100 miles, 120 miles, get out, walk around, have stop at a playground for the kids to play if you're traveling with your kids and those types of things. Get exercise. Know that it's better if you eat a lot of smaller meals while you're driving as opposed to stopping at restaurants and eating a full meal and having a lot of heavy food sitting in your stomach while you're trying to drive because that will make you drowsy as well uh, when you're operating a vehicle. Uh, comfort and clothing, especially now in the winter time, you don't want to be wearing big boots and large coats and those types of things. Take all that stuff off because, of course, you can adjust the temperature in the cabin of the vehicle and keep yourself warm. Uh, have emergency clothes in the vehicle. You know, for example, if you're traveling through the mountains, uh, you're in Washington State and you're going through Snoqualmie Pass, for example, or you're in North Dakota and you're going to Utah, uh, you know, have emergency clothes in the vehicle, have big jackets, hats, mitts, boots, all those sorts of things in case, you know, you break down 
uh, you know, or, and it gets cold or you get stranded, you slide off the road or whatnot. Uh, back supports access accessibility to podcasts, CDs, uh, medications, water, and glasses. Make sure you bring your glasses. Make sure you bring uh, sunglasses if you need those for driving safer and whatnot. Emergency stops and breaks downs. Uh, do not pull over on the side of an interstate unless it is an absolute emergency. And, you know, a diaper exploding is not an emergency for and a reason for stopping on the side of the interstate. You need to be broken down. Get off on an off ramp and other places because I can tell you the side of an interstate, the side of a freeway is not a safe place to break down. Make sure that you have a phone charging uh, cable in your vehicle so that you can charge your cell phone because it's really tough to call for help. If you break down and your, your cell phone isn't charged as well, have a survival kit in your vehicle as I was saying at the, in the introduction. Know how to boost the battery if, you, if your battery goes dead. Uh, you know, some vehicle survival kits now will have a little air compressor in there that allow you to put some air in one of the tires and whatnot. Of course, most of the newer vehicles are going to have uh, tire pressure monitoring gauges on them as well. Uh, so that will look after the vehicle and whatnot. So all of that stuff in case you break down, in case you're in an emergency on the side of the road. So good luck on your driver's test. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Head back over here and uh, V, what do I do when driving in the winter time? Uh, v, good question. Uh, first of all, make sure that you have winter washer fluid in your uh, windshield reservoir. Make sure you know how to turn on the defrost, the windshield wipers. Make sure that you have good windshield washers, uh, good windshield wipers on your vehicle as well. Good quality tires on your vehicle and with the proper pressure. Uh, if you're not mechanically inclined and don't know how to pump up your tires or you don't know how to check your tires then definitely take your vehicle into a shop and get them to check the tires on your vehicle uh, what goes into a winter survival kit Corey's put that video up there have a look at that as well and then you'll know what you need to do uh, I'm a new teen driver and I just passed my driver's test last month yes uh, the other thing about driving in the wintertime, excellent question, VE, is to brake early and then creep up to where you actually want to stop. Take note of the temperature outside because the closer the temperature is to freezing, 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, the slipperier it's going to be outside. It's not when it's minus 20 degrees Celsius or minus 15 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. That's not. It's fairly sticky and fairly easy to drive at those lower temperatures but when the temperature is right around the freezing mark that's when you're going to get a layer of water on top of the ice and snow because it's freezing and thawing and that layer of water is what lubricates the snow and ice and it's going to make it extremely slippery so take note of the temperature outside as well uh, Mallory if you're traveling to your destination at night make sure all your lights are working as well and yes uh, Mallory excellent point and that is part of the pre-trip inspection making sure that everything is working on your car uh, make sure that you get in, turn the lights on, go around, make sure the low beam headlights are working, make sure the high beam headlights are working, brake lights, turn signals, make sure that your clearance lights are all working. All of that is operational when you're traveling for long distances and you want to make sure your vehicle is in tip top shape because you want to be seen because you've got your lights on while you're driving and as well you want to communicate effectively with other traffic and you need to do that by having the, all the lights working on your vehicle as well if you have a brake light out or you have a tail light out it's easy to fix on most vehicles it takes 10 minutes if you can wield a screwdriver same thing with most of the headlights i mean unless you own an older chevy malibu <laughs> it's going to be a little tough but again this is something that if you detect and determine that it's not working you can take it into the shop and get them to fix it before you depart on your trip next week before American Thanksgiving. Uh, Elevator says, I have a battery pack as a backup if necessary. And yes, uh, you can purchase those battery packs now and they're really easy to use. You just pull them out, keep them charged up and you just hook the battery cables onto your battery and it will boost your battery. So that will save you from asking somebody else to give you a boost. Uh, VE, what's the recommended speed to drive during snowy days? Uh, VE, you don't really need to know what the recommended speed is because the traffic flow will slow down according to the uh, conditions of the roadway. Most people will not speed very much when weather is bad. So know that. Just keep up with traffic flow 
and you'll probably be fine. Uh, elevator, I always use my cruise control when driving long distance unless it's raining or snowing. Uh, elevator fan, if you have good tires on your vehicle, you can use cruise control during rain, okay? Just the one piece that I tell drivers who are using cruise control is to know how to cancel the cruise control, okay? Most newer vehicles will have a cancel button on it. Uh, you can touch the brake and that will disengage the cruise control. I don't like using the, cru the brake to disengage the cruise control because you're engaging the brake lights. And as well, you're applying the brakes a little bit. So it's not your best option for disengaging the cruise control. Uh, in my car, my car is a manual. And so if I just touch the clutch, just like the slightest touch on the clutch, it will disengage the cruise. So that's generally my preferred method. Uh, in newer vehicles, for example, Tracy's Audi, I will cancel on the cruise control. And most, uh, you know, Hyundai's, Nissan's, Chevy's, Ford's, they will have a cancel button on the steering wheel that will allow you to cancel the cruise control. So figure out how to use that and that will allow you to uh, cancel it if you get into trouble in rain or those types of things. And generally, if I have the cancel button and it's on the steering wheel, I will kind of rest my thumb near the cancel button so I can like immediately be right there and, and hit the cruise, uh, hit the cancel on the cruise control. Uh, Nickel City, hello my friend, how are you? Uh, from Northern Ontario, it's finally snowing here tonight. Woohoo, excellent, snowing in Sudbury, Ontario. Awesome. Uh, Cami, uh, many drivers on the road drive higher the speed limit, even the slowest lane, should you drive with them or within three, uh, within the limit? Uh, Cami, it depends on whether you're going for a driver's license or whether you have your license. If you're preparing to take your driver's test, then you should drive the posted speed limit. You have to drive the posted speed limit uh, for the purposes of your driver's test. Uh, if you have your license, then I recommend keeping up with traffic flow of obviously within reason and how much, you know, how comfortable you feel on the roadways. Uh, most places are going to be five to eight miles an hour above the posted speed limit. And therefore, you know, for me, that's fine. You just keep up with traffic flow after you get your license. Uh, Colton, to cancel in a Toyota Camry, pull the cruise control stock towards you. Yes, and it's so Colton's talking about a cruise control that is another lever out of the steering column. And exactly that, you just pull it towards you and that will cancel the cruise control. So again, when I'm in those types of vehicles that has one of those, I will kind of rest my hand on the steering wheel near the cruise control. And of course, this using cruise control goes with observation, looking far down the road, taking note of traffic patterns in front of you, determining the actions of individual road users, maintaining that four to six second following distance. So if traffic situation in front of you changes, it's not a surprise to you and you can just simply cancel the cruise control and allow the vehicle to slow down on its own without touching the brakes. And then Colton, I suspect that if cancel is pulled towards you, then to resume is just push it forward and then the car will resume on cruise control again. And basically you've used the throttle to control speed rather than using the brake. And that's what you wanna use for optimum fuel economy, uh, calm awareness when you're driving and you're paying attention to what's going on in the driving environment that's going to allow you to use cr cruise control for maximum efficiency, especially in this day and age with the cost of fuel uh, being as high as it is. We want to try and get the best fuel economy that we can. Cruise control is going to allow you the best uh, fuel economy because electronic injected engines, fuel electronic fuel injected engines work best on cruise control. That's when they get their best fuel mileage. So Colton just corrected me. It's actually to resume is actually push, push it up. Uh, I'm thinking of Tracy's Audi that you pull it towards you to resume. Uh, Noah, uh, I have my road test on Friday and tomorrow a lesson and it's currently snowing. I've never driven in the snow. Uh, Noah, you're going to be fine. Okay. Uh, probably by the morning, uh, before you get in for your driving lesson, they're probably going to have the roads cleared and they're going to be well maintained, salted, plowed, those types of things. Just know that the farther you get away from main roads, the more snow there's going to be on the roadways because 
uh, maintenance crews are going to focus on the main highways and main roads through town first. And generally for your driving test, or for your driving lesson rather, you're going to work on those roads because that's where your test is going to take place. Now, if you do get into the residential areas and around schools and those types of things, yes, it's going to be a little bit slippery and a little bit slick. And actually, it's a good thing that you have a lesson tomorrow. So you'll learn quickly. You come up, break early, and then actually just creep up to where you want to stop at the intersection. So you're going to be fine. Take a breath. It's not as a big a deal as you think it is. And, you know, as I say, most vehicles have good quality all-season tires on them or they have winter tires on them. And it's very unlikely in this day and age that you're going to get a rear-wheel drive vehicle. Most vehicles are going to be front-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, or they're going to be four-wheel drive vehicles. And those provide really good traction uh, in, in climate weather and in snow and ice and those types of things. Uh, Blazing King just passed my license yesterday. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you so much for stopping back and letting us know that we were able to help you out with passing your driver's test. And awesome, awesome. And what did you do to go and celebrate passing your license? Awesome. Big D, uh, do examiners care how you steer? I've been told to use hand over hand. However, I find hand over hand very uncomfortable. I just like holding nine and three and not really hand over hand. Uh, Big D, uh, I'm not sure. Are you doing the push-pull method, the milking the cow method? Is that what you're using to, to steer the vehicle? Because really, those are your two options. It's either hand over hand or it's the push-pull method. I find I don't like the push-pull method because it's not as fast as hand over hand. Uh, I really encourage students to be able to use the hand over hand method. Uh, elevator uh, traffic in big cities will likely be congested on holidays. Yes, and excellent point. Thank you for that, elevator, for reminding me. This is the other piece. In big cities, if grandma lives in... Minneapolis, Minnesota, you don't want to be going into the city <laughs> in the morning or in the afternoon when it's going to be congested. You want to try and time it so that you sh show up there at kind of 11 o'clock in the morning or you want to show up in the early afternoon. That way you're going to vo avoid congestion. The other thing is if you can avoid going in on the, the uh, interstates and those types of things, uh, you might avoid some of the congestion and backup and whatnot as well. Uh, of course, there's always alternative forms of transportation. You can fly, take the bus, <laughs> those types of things. But here we're talking about driving to grandma's house for turkey, right? Uh, Captain Gamer, my road test is this Friday at cities that I've never drove through. Uh, Captain Gamer, one of my recommendations on that is to show up there two to three hours before your driver's test. Go for a drive around. Uh, get used to the streets in and around the driving test center and that's going to really help you out with taking your test there before you actually get in with the or get going with the examiner as well have a look on Google Maps figure out where the test center is and figure out where the school zones are going to be because if you're going here on Friday you're going to be in school zones and know that if you speed in a school zone that is an automatic fail on a driver's test uh big dig for example if i make a left turn i adjust my left to 12 and right to six and turn until i really need to do hand over hand okay um uh big d that might or might not work for you did you tell me when your driver's test is um uh, the other thing, if you're really concerned about it, Big D, one of the things that I might suggest you do is to hire a driving instructor and go out for a lesson uh, before you show up for your driving test. That way you're going to know for sure if the method that you're using for steering is going to be accepted by the driving examiner. The instructor will be able to give you feedback specifically uh, not just for your steering, but also for your other skills and abilities that you have in terms of driving to allow you to pass your driver's test. Corey's put up the school signs and zones. Thank you for that. Uh, Nickel City got my steel studded snow tires on ready for the next five or six months of winter. So pumped. <laughs> you know, the only thing, Rob, that I don't like about steel studded tires is the amount of noise they make. They make so much noise, uh, road noise, when it's bare pavement. They're great when it's snowy, when there's ice on the roads, but 
on bare pavement, they just drive me crazy. I can't get them off the car fast enough just because of that road noise. Uh, Big D, you're in Alberta, Canada. Okay, uh, again, Big D, I, I recommend you taking at least one lesson with a driving instructor, and uh, that will definitely give you feedback that you need to be successful on your driver's test. Uh, yes, Colton, exactly what I said there. He's reiterating again what I'm saying. Uh, Cammy, uh, will you get a ticket if you are driving with the flow of traffic but the speed is above the posted speed limit? Uh, Cammy, it's unlikely that you're going to get a speeding ticket if you're keeping up with traffic flow because traffic flow, as I said, is five to eight miles an hour faster than the posted speed limit. It's unlikely that a police officer is going to pull you over for that. Now, it, again, it depends where you are. It depends what kind of you know what kind of mood the police officer is in, and those types of things. It might, but it's unlikely. Okay, because there is a tolerance on the speed limit. For example, here uh, where I live, between Vernon and Bri and Kelowna, British Columbia. The highway is posted 90 kilometers an hour. It's 55 miles an hour. Everybody on that roadway drives 110 kilometers an hour, which is 15, uh, 110, which is 20 kilometers an hour above the posted speed limit. Police officers don't pull you over at 110. As long as you're not doing more than 110, they're not going to pull you over as a general rule. Okay, that's the traffic flow. But again, it depends on where you are how fast you're driving, if you're driving by yourself or you're driving with a group of vehicles, all right? Uh, Corey says, all issues you should be able to ask the test examiner right before the test so you know for sure if you need to adjust your steering. Uh, Corey, I'm not sure whether you could really do that because uh, examiners are a little bit of the mind that you should show up ready to take the test. They're not going to, they're not going to really say, you know, you should adjust, you should do this or do that. I would, again, I would really counsel uh, Big D there to take a, a lesson with a driving instructor to figure out whether the, the steering method that they're using is going to uh, work out and help them out uh, to make sure that they have the right s skills to handle the vehicle and to be safe when they're driving. Uh, gamer, tips on parallel parking between two vehicles. Okay, uh, Gamer. Parking between two vehicles, you need at least a space and a half between two vehicles to be able to park successfully. Uh, and then all the other rules, the other rules of parallel parking are the same. And Corey will put the video up for you on parallel parking between two vehicles. There are some other landmarks that you can use, but essentially you pull up, uh, line up the mirrors is a rough estimate, but you essentially want to line up the bumpers of the vehicle, pick out your 45, Crank the steering wheel all the way to the right, back up until you're directly facing your 45 degrees. Straighten the wheels out, back up until you can see the license plate of the vehicle uh, here. And then turn the wheel all the way to the left, bring the front end in and then pull up until you can see the top of the bumper. And again, there's more detail in the videos on how to parallel park between two vehicles and that will help you to be able to do that. Uh, should you let the steering wheel slide through your hands or have full control? Uh, Big D, you can let the steering wheel slide through your hands so long as your palms stay in contact with the steering wheel. You can't just kind of let go of it and go, woo! <laughs> no, that won't fly with the driving examiner. But you can let it slide back through your hands and then make a slight adjustment at the end. You can do that. And again, Corey will put up the video for you on how to steer and how to control the steering wheel and that'll help you out. Uh, Colton, I might not have an up-to-date driver's license manual for Arkansas, but a lot of stuff uh, from around 1998 still applies today. Yes, and Colton, that's one of the things about driving is, is that it has not changed in very many years and decades, and there's some stuff that should be you know, changed according to technology of vehicles and those types of things. I mean, for example, most instructors are still teaching 9 and 3 on the steering wheel. Well, some steering wheels are not ergonomically set up for you to be at nine and three with your hands on the steering wheel. It doesn't really matter. If you have your hands at 10 and two or nine and three, eight and four, any one of those positions, as long as you have two hands on the steering wheel is acceptable when you're driving the vehicle and taking uh, your driver's test. 
Uh, Mallory asked me, why do I like hand over hand steering better? The reason, Mallory, that I like hand over hand steering better is just you can move the steering wheel a lot faster with hand over hand because you're moving more of the steering wheel than just if you're sliding your hands together like this. You just reach over and grab more of the steering wheel so you can turn more. But most of the time, you're only turning the steering wheel a quarter of a turn, half a turn, and you can easily move move the steering wheel that far without changing your hand position. It's only if you're moving the steering wheel in one rotation and to turn for one rotation is most of the time going to be like on a squared off intersection in a residential area and you're gonna have to do one full rotation of the steering wheel. Uh, the other reason I like hand over hand and the reason it moves faster is because I come from truck driving uh, where steering wheels move two full revolutions as opposed to one and a half in a, in a car. Uh, so full right to full left is one and a half revolutions in a car. In a big truck, it's two. And you have to be able to, when you're backing up a semi-trailer and you're in a tight spot, you got to be able to manipulate that steering wheel really quickly uh, when you're backing up to get, you know, to get the semi-trailer around to where you need to get it around. So hand over hand allows you to do that a lot faster uh, when you're backing up big trucks and whatnot. And also you'll find that if you get into backing up pickup trucks with trailers on behind, whether you're hauling a utility trailer, you know, your boat trailer, you know, camper or whatnot, uh, that it's going to be a lot easier to back up your vehicle uh, with using hand over hand steering when you're reversing. Also in a personal vehicle, the one time on a driver's test that you can use one hand to manipulate the steering wheel is when you're reversing. That's the one exception to the two hands on the steering wheel. Uh, elevator air airports will also be busy on the holidays. You're absolutely correct, my friend. Uh, Colton, faster than hand over hand is one hand using a knob. <laughs> yes, uh, Colton, unfortunately using uh, a spinner knob in most states and provinces is not legal unless you have a medical note from a doctor saying that you need that uh, to be able to manipulate the steering wheel. Joe, uh, at the start of every snow season, it seems to take the snow cleaning crews a while to get into the swing of things. So in November, December, I will always allow more time to get from point A to point B. And yes, uh, Joe. And the other thing, Joe, that I would argue is, is that because most municipalities, cities, counties have outsourced the road cleaning that, you know, it takes them a lot longer to get into the residential areas than it does for them to get to the main roads and those types of things because that's what they're focusing on first. Because if they don't get the main roads closed, then the driving public is going to complain to the city, the authorities, and say, oh, these roads aren't cleaned and those types of things. And then, of course, the crews who have the work has been outsourced to are then you know they don't get their contract renewed so they're going to focus on the main roads first and then eventually they're going to get into the residential areas and those types of things so that's what happens uh all right all right so we got all of that and a couple of people asked me about driving tests in the winter time driving on snow uh know that you know, don't panic too much if you're taking your driver's test and you've got a bit of snow, okay? If it gets really bad and it's really slippery and the driving examiners don't feel that it's safe for you to take your driving test, they will postpone the test if it's too slippery because they're not going to risk their safety, right? Uh, and they're not going to risk your safety or the safety of the driving public. So they will postpone your driving test if it is too slippery and too dangerous on the day that your test is scheduled. So know that and take some comfort in that, that your test will be postponed and they'll do it another day. Now, if it is snowing, it's going to be easier for you to take your driver's test than, it, than if it's not snowing in the summertime. Because again, all of the reasons for taking your driver's test in the wintertime, you don't have to be 8 to 12 inches from the curb. The driving examiner is going to be a lot more relaxed because they're not doing as many tests. Because most <laughs> students are now waiting for spring. They're waiting for winter to be over. They're not taking their driver's test. They're postponing test dates. As well, uh, driving examiners will give you kudos for taking your test in the wintertime. You don't have to park between the lines when you're reverse stall parking at the test center. You simply have to back in beside the vehicle that's parked there already, which is a lot easier because you have a landmark and you can back in on the driver's side and that's your sight side of the vehicle. 
Uh, when you stop at intersections, you don't have to stop at the correct position, which is before the stop line, before the crosswalk line or sidewalks. And if those two conditions don't exist, then at the edge of the intersection. You simply have to stop before the sidewalk. When the way is clear, you've yielded to all other road users uh, in the intersection. Then you simply creep forward into the intersection until you can see, and when the way is clear, then you can proceed. That's all you need to do in the winter time to pass your driver's test. It is easier to take your driver's test in the winter time, and I know that most of the time when I say this, people look at me and go, "What you talking about, Rick? You crazy man? I'm not taking my test in the winter time. I postponed it till the spring, and when it's nice and sunny, and I'm putting suntan lotion on, I take my test then." That's what most people are saying to me because I'm nuts. I'm not nuts. It's easier to pass your driver's test in the wintertime. Do your driver's test in the wintertime, okay? Uh, Colton, uh, there was a truck driver at one point whose doctor told him not to drive uh, one due to a bad shoulder and he drove anyway, resulting in his death. Uh, yeah, that's not a great story, Colton. That's not a great story. I uh, missed a shift and his Jake brake lost connection to the wheels. Uh, yes, because it's not in gear. Endel, uh, I want to thank you for making part of my practice to earn my driver's license in 2021. Your advice helped out. Uh, Justin, so glad that we could help out. And thank you for stopping back and letting us know that you passed your driver's test. That is awesome, awesome news, my friend. And just going back to driving in the wintertime, driving in the snow. And the other piece about that, I'll just add to this, that if you do take your driver's test in the wintertime, uh, you can go a little bit slower in the residential areas where there's going to be more snow because you know you got parked cars and kids and those types of things and it's going to take you longer to stop. So you can drive a bit slower in these residential areas where the, where the streets aren't as cleared. So that's the other uh, reason for you to be taking your driver's test in the wintertime. Uh, Mallory, how much snow do you have this week? Uh, Mallory, we don't really have any snow. We got four to six inches last Monday a week ago Monday and basically it's been melting and you know it's just that yucky dirty melting snow kind of thing so we don't really have much snow at all now uh, Joe when I lived in Montreal I was bowled over by how efficiently they did snow clearing people would come from places like Moscow Russia to learn from them wondered why Toronto couldn't do it as well <laughs> yeah it's interesting how some cities do some things really well and then other cities just kind of fall flat on their face and, uh, you know, <coughs> excuse me, I think of, you know, last year they were kind of making fun of Texas when they got all that snowstorm, but Texas doesn't get snow. It's the same thing with us here. We get very little snow and most of the city trucks that we have around here clearing snow have belly plows. Belly plows are useless things. They, they're able to clear a skiff of snow off the road. You know, they're not big payloaders and big snow blowers that are able to fill dump trucks and those types of things. Uh, it was the same thing, Joe, when I lived in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada in the wintertime. I mean, we got tremendous amounts of snow. And then, you know, they'd have signs in the snow banks, you know, every month. Uh, snow clearing, don't park on the roads. And they'd come along with these huge tractors and snow blowers and dump trucks. And, you know, the streets would be cleared of snow. And, you know, they'd go at it again for the rest of the winter. I mean, just so efficient in snow removal within the city. But other places just kind of fall flat on their face. It's the same thing with public transit. Some cities, Ottawa, again, has tremendous public transit. I mean, it is the federal capital. So, I mean, you know, there's lots of money put into public services. But some urban centers just have great services. And other ones, eh, not so much. I mean, especially here. Uh, five or six years ago, we got 36 inches of snow, uh, three feet of snow in a 24 hour period. And basically, you know, the equipment that they had couldn't move that volume of snow. So essentially most of the residential areas never got cleaned up through the rest of the winter. They just left it until it melted in the spring. <laughs> uh, Colton, that truck driver went off a cliff with a loaded or empty tanker. I forget whether he hit a load or not. He was on a steep downhill. Uh, Colton, that is not a good story. That's that's as bad as the story in Colorado with the guy that, you know, burned out his brakes and then ran into four or five cars at the bottom of the hill. Uh, lots of those kinds of different kinds of truck driving stories. Uh, they're not good truck driving stories. 
on that note, there is a happy note about that. And I've told this story about working at the hospital when I did driver rehabilitation uh, and uh, was working with a native Canadian, had this old blue beat up Chevy and he was coming in because he was getting hand controls uh, put in his van because he was an amputee below both above both knees. So he was in a wheelchair. Uh, both knees have been uh, both legs have been amputated above the knees. And uh, so I had a less, couple of lessons with him actually and went out, was showing him how to use hand controls, drive the, the vehicle. We had a van that he was using uh, with hand controls and uh, met him in the back parking lot one day. He was coming in for a second lesson and uh, he kind of points back to his blue van and he says, oh, I'm really glad I'm getting these hand controls. He said, oh, that's, that's really great, Joe. I, you know, I'm really happy that we can help you out and get you driving, get you mobile. He says, yeah, he says, I've been driving that old van back there with a broomstick for two years now. <laughs> so, you know, uh, next time that somebody's doing something that just really annoys you when you're driving, just, just think of Joe with his broomstick uh, driving his old beat up blue van because people are doing all kinds of crazy things uh, in their personal vehicles when they're driving. You know, they're not just eating and drinking and, you know, comb, doing their hair and their makeup and shaving and those types of things. They're doing all kinds of crazy things. Uh, yes. Uh, so that, just have a think of Joe. Uh, Zane, uh, is it better to uh, doing the driver's test on weekdays or weekends? Uh, Zane, uh, it, it, it doesn't really matter whether you do your test on the weekdays or do it in at on the weekend. It's not really going to matter. What matters is that you practice at the same time that you're going to be taking your test. So for example, if your test is during the week at say it's on a Thursday at 10 o'clock in the morning, make sure that you're practicing during the week at 10 o'clock in the morning so that you will experience the same kind of traffic. If your test is on the weekend on a Saturday, for example, make sure that you're practicing on Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning in and around the test center where you're going to be taking your test. So it's not really going to matter whether you do it during the week or whether you do it on the weekend. Now, there may be some smart drivers watching now on the live stream or some smart drivers watching on the replay, and they may have a different opinion about that, and their experience may be different whether you're taking it on the weekend or weekday. But I, what I counsel you to do is to make sure that you practice driving at least once or twice, maybe even three times at the same time, on the same day, whether it's a weekend or a weekday, in and around the test center so you know what to expect in terms of traffic. Uh, retired 2019, do you have a video on how to drive in the mountains? I have no experience driving in the mountains. Uh, yes, uh, one of the videos uh, 2019 that you can have a look at is how to drive on curvy roads and I am definitely driving in the mountains there. It's the road up to Silver Star Ski Resort here where I live in the Okanagan Valley. Uh, Colton, people who get pissed uh, when someone changes lanes legally annoy me to the point where I want to drain all the fluids from their vehicles. Uh, <laughs> okay, there you go. Uh, my friend Epic, where did you go? Uh, during the holiday season, prepare for severe, severe weather because you are likely to encounter snowstorms or winter weather warnings. Uh, therefore, you must have the right tools, including ice shovels and chains. Yes, survival kits. Be ready for winter have all of that clothing, survival winter kits in your vehicle. Make sure that you have uh, prescription medications, any of those that you might need, sunglasses, prescription glasses, all of that stuff in your vehicle. Make sure that you have a phone charging cable. And again, if you're not sure where you're going and you are using the navigation on your phone, get a phone holder in your car. Now, I know for some of us, we hold out. I know that I did for a couple of years. I did not have a phone holder in my vehicle and I would just throw the phone on the passenger seat and listen to the audio of the uh, Google Maps and the directions for the nav. Get a phone holder. It makes life so much easier and the nav will just sit there and run and you can just glance at it and make sure that you're on the right place. You're, you're on the right road and looking for the right landmarks and those types of things. It just, you know, for $20, it just makes it so much easier and you know you could put that on your black friday list of things to buy uh next week <laughs> and that will really help you out uh in terms of navigating and getting around and those types of things uh joe i'm sure freezing rain is tension inducing in indiana as it is here in ontario it's the main reason my winter tires are michelin ice 3s's and not snow tires and yes 
freezing rain is probably one of the most difficult inclement weather conditions to drive in. There's absolutely no doubt about that because it is sheer ice and there's a layer of water on top of the ice that makes it extremely slippery. It's a rare condition. You don't get it very often. But what is freezing rain? It's rain that falls as rain and then it hits cold surfaces, cars, the road, those types of things. And it's cold and it freezes on contact. Thus, it's called freezing rain. And it's dangerous because when you're driving, it looks like rain. It looks like you're driving in rain. But it freezes on contact and therefore it can be deceiving that it's actually ice. And one time in the truck, I was driving through freezing rain and stopped in a rest area. <laughs> and I walked around the front of the truck and the entire grill is just like covered in ice. So know that, that that is one of the things that makes it deceiving when you're driving in freezing rain. Is It looks like rain, but it's actually freezing on contact and is ice. My friend Big Mac Sam from the Bronx is here where he said last week that it was cold and it was 45 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> Which for those of us who are experiencing winter, that's like hoodie weather. <laughs> but we love you, Sam, because you're so, you know, young looking. <laughs> uh... You're okay from your being rear-ended? You got that? Did you get that video up yet? We want to have a look at that for sure. Uh, Epic drove on the interstate highway during the holiday season back in 2018, and you just watch out for erratic drivers and large vehicles that it might include uh, might include CDL drivers that are way over their work hours. Yes, and sometimes that does in fact happen. That not just CDL drivers, but drivers of personal vehicles as well are tired and fatigued when they're operating a vehicle. So know that there are gonna be people who are doing that. So again, maintain your space behind other vehicles. And if you can, all four sides of your vehicle, drive by yourself, be the lone wolf, so to speak. And that is going to keep you out of trouble because as I say, if you're not near anything, it's less likely that you're going to hit something. All right, uh, Colton, would you rather drive a four on the floor or a three in the tree? <laughs> uh, Colton, neither one of them are great transmissions. I mean, I think we're into the day and age where uh, I would prefer to have at least a five-speed, if not a six-speed, because that sixth gear in a manual transmission is really, uh, you know, just gives you the, when you're out on the highway, sixth gear is just that really overdrive gear that's really great on the flat. Uh, now, saying that, if I had a vehicle, I would really love to have a three in the tree and just give the keys to people and just randomly ask them to move my vehicle and see you know, whether they could drive the three in the tree or not. <laughs> that would be really great. Uh, Sam says, Google says that uh, temperature is okay. Not yet. I'll get the video up soon. I'm doing great, though, and that is awesome, my friend. Happy to hear that you're doing well, and thank you for the encouragement for hitting that thumbs up button, uh, subscribing, uh, hitting the bell notification, and all of that good stuff. If you're watching now on the replay, uh, watching now or watching on the replay. Oh, Big Mac Sam, you're saying that Google supports your thesis that it is in fact cold when it's 45 degrees uh, Celsius. <laughs> well. If Google supports what you're saying, then it, it's got to be fact. It, that's all there is to it, Sam. It's got to be fact. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Big D, just to clarify again, examiners are more lenient with speed in the winter or just snowy roads. Uh, Big D, on snowy roads. So if it's just cold and roads are clear, uh, they want to try and keep as close to the posted speed limit as, as possible. But if the roads are snowy, then yes, you can drive a bit slower uh, in, uh, in keeping with those conditions on the roadway. So you're driving to the conditions of the roadway. So excellent question there about that. Because know that most of the time, and this is the other reason about taking your driver's test in the wintertime, 85 to 90% of the time in the wintertime, the roads are going to be clear, they're going to be plowed, they're going to be well salted and sanded, and there's going to be good traction. There's only going to be about 10 or 15% of the time that it's going to be snowing, freezing rain, inclement conditions, you know, treacherous driving, and those types of things. So, and if it is like that, as I said previously, the test center is going to postpone your driving test. They're not going to take you out in treacherous driving conditions because they're not going to risk your safety, their safety, and the safety of the driving public. So know that. 
And yes, if the roadways are snowy, if you're in residential areas and those types of things, you can drive a bit slower. But if it hasn't snowed for days, the roads are cleared, well plowed, maintain those types of things, then you have to do the posted speed limit. Get up to speed as quickly as possible. Uh, Colton, I waited on the school bus when it was below freezing in shorts and a t-shirt once, never doing that again. <laughs> yes, my son did that a couple uh, last winter. Uh, dropped him off to soccer and then uh, he was in shorts and t-shirt and it was minus five degrees Celsius, which is, I don't know what, about 15 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> and I got a call from the police to come and pick him up because the the soccer wasn't happening. We got the schedule mixed up. So anyway, he's standing out in the freezing cold in shorts and a t-shirt. So yes, we know all about that, Colton. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Solomon, uh, I have a permit, but uh, zero experience. What shall I do as a beginner? Uh, Solomon, what I would suggest uh, is if you have your learner's license, you need to have somebody who can mentor you and sit in the passenger seat and allow you to practice driving. The other thing I would suggest if you don't have a great deal of experience is to book a driving lesson with a driving instructor or book some lessons and that way that he or she can help you out to practice driving and to prepare you to take your driving test. But you're going to need to get some driving experience uh, to be able to learn how to drive safely and to be able to prepare and take the driving test. Uh, Joe says, driving tests in Calgary could be interesting as it can go from plus 20 to minus 20 degrees Celsius and uh, next to no time over there. Yes, when they experience the Chinooks uh, there in Calgary, and I have been there when it's done that. It's a little bit strange that the temperature fluctuates from minus 10 degrees Celsius all the way up to 20 degrees Celsius and then it's everything's just thawing and there's just water running everywhere. Uh, it's a bit uh, interesting when it does that for sure. But um, that's uh, something that you have to deal with uh, in places like that where you in Calgary, Alberta and whatnot. But um, you know, the other thing is if you're in Duluth, Minnesota or you're in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and you know they have those hard snowy conditions where it's super super cold uh, you know they're gonna have snow tires on their vehicles again as the other piece about it is vehicle technology most vehicles are going to be front-wheel drive they're going to be all-wheel drive or they're going to be four-wheel drive it's unlikely in this day and age that you're gonna find a vehicle that is two-wheel rear-wheel drive those are just really rare I mean unless your parents have a classic hot rod or a pickup an old pickup truck or something like that I mean, Tim's not here tonight with Drive Smart VC, but he has an old Tacoma that's rear wheel drive. If you, you know, I would not suggest that you take that for a driver's test. Make sure you take something front wheel drive, all wheel drive, four wheel drive that has good quality tires on it. And that will really help you out. Uh, Colton says that minus five degrees is 24 degrees Fahrenheit. So thank you for that correction, my friend. Uh, <laughs> Uh, seven degrees Celsius is cold. So Google recognizes that as being cold too. Uh, some places close on the holidays as elevator says here. And yes, know that next week during American Thanksgiving, that there are going to be a lot of places that in fact are going to be closed for the holidays. So know that, uh, Sam says yes, because when I asked my Google mini, if it was going to be cold tomorrow, she said, yes, <laughs> Sam, you're killing me. You're just, you're killing me. <laughs> yes, it's going to be cold tomorrow, according to Google. Where, I mean, where did we live 12 years ago when we didn't have Google to ask for all of this information? Uh, gamer, is it okay to park your car in the winter at the garage? Uh, in the winter at, uh, are you asking me if it's okay to park your car in the garage in the winter time? Because if you have a garage, Yes, I would definitely recommend that you park your vehicle in the garage. If you have a garage and have access to a garage, then yes, that's the best way to do it because then, you know, you go out and, uh, you know, there isn't any snow and ice and you don't have to scrape the, the glass to keep it clear and whatnot. This is the other piece about last point that I'll make here about taking your driver's test in the wintertime. If you do have snow and ice on your vehicle, make sure that you clear it off completely before you show up for your driver's test, don't have you know a foot of snow on the roof of your vehicle. That's not gonna fly uh, if you're showing up for your driver's test in the winter time. All the glass has to be clear, all the snow has to be taken off of it. So you may take 
need a few minutes to get all the snow and ice off your vehicle before you head down and show up for your driver's test. Now, you're going to have time to clear all the glass and whatnot with the heat and the defrost in the vehicle anyway because you shouldn't just like, you know, fire up the vehicle and show up 10 minutes before your driver's test. You need to go for a little bit of a warm-up drive before you go down for your driver's test so you'll have time to get all the glass clear on the vehicle. Again, make sure the windshield wipers are working well. Make sure you have winter washer fluid in your vehicle and whatnot, okay? Joe says, great live stream tonight, Rick. Uh, just what we need to get into the right mindset for safe winter driving. Have a fabulous week. Thank you so much, my friend, and all the best, Joe. Uh, Colton, would you drive a 66 Chevy Bel Air in modern traffic? Uh, sure as hell wouldn't people scare scare me. <laughs> uh, awesome. Uh, my brother and his friend just drove across Canada from Edmonton, Alberta in a 1972 uh, Pontiac Grand Prix. Vintage. 50-year-old car. <laughs> With a 455 big block in it. And uh, they got to Northern Ontario and they had to change out the fuel pump in it. And my brother is an automotive technician as I've mentioned previously and was able to take the old mechanical fuel pump and change it out to an electronic fuel pump on this old vehicle and anyway they got it across Canada and drove it home a 50 year old vehicle so that was something else all right so we're gonna leave it there for tonight uh, thank you so much for tuning in thank you for those of you watching on the replay uh, check out the smarter driver course package over at the uh, smart drive test website Corey's put up the link for that thank you so much for that and uh, uh, Outmeal Suzuki X7, uh, I don't know whether it is. I would check out, just Google it, check out the uh, reviews here on Google, and that'll help you out for sure. Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. and uh, so good luck on your driver's test. If you've got a driver's test coming up in the next couple of weeks, and uh, if you passed your driver's test in the last couple of weeks, congratulations on that. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.